Well, hello, friends. It's time once again for another... Kevin, another zesty episode <laughs> of <Zesty>. VA Radio. <laughs> Fantastic. A zesty episode of VA Radio. Which, you know, I, I was kind of thinking flavorful adjectives myself. I was going to go with scrum delicious, but uh, oh. I, I like zesty better. I appreciate that. Well, you know I had Mexican today for lunch, and it's still kind of talking to me, so yeah, very zesty. Go. Well, I, I apparently have ice cream on the brain, so uh, <laughs> anyway, welcome to uh, a VA Radio. It's a, it's a podcast-type show where uh, we try to talk about cars, and, and sometimes other things happen. I'm your host, Kevin Oste, joined, as always, by our esteemed co-host, Mr. Mike Cuball clark and, uh, Howdy, sir. Absolutely. Howdy to you, too. Mm -hmm. uh and and howdy to everybody around the world i've been noticing uh interestingly um a lot of listeners in australia a lot of listeners in canada uh, of course the united states so we welcome everybody who uh set aside time in their day (laughs) 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 like like that's what they did (laughs) of course they did it's, it's like those pictures from the 50s where they're all sitting around the radio, you know, in the living room. <laughs> That's the- what I envision every time the show comes yes, out. the big Zenith console. <laughs> That'd be perfect. Uh, and we start the show off with a, um, an automotive trivia question. And it's, uh, it, it's fun. Sometimes it's educational. It's really just a uh, bribery move to let give something people to listen to the whole show so they can hang out to the end to hear the answer, you know. Mm-hmm. Because we don't know where this is going. Uh, hmm. Have you prepared a trivia question? I have prepared a trivia question. I, I cannot confirm its authenticity, but it's a good question nonetheless. That uh, works for me. All right. All right. And here we go. Kevin, you no doubt have seen plenty of Corvettes in your, uh, in your illustrious career. Plenty of, uh, you know, Grand Sports. Mm-hmm. Uh, stingrays and what have you and you've also no doubt have seen plenty of uh, zr1 corvettes mm-hmm. but one thing that is never really clear kevin is what does the zr mean in zr1 mm-hmm. well that's a great question and yes everybody loves corvette trivia uh so <laughs> don't they though <laughs> they do they do they do uh that's a great one. So I'm going to just kind of go out on a limb and say the the ZR, uh, because I, I truly don't know, um, but I'm going to say the ZR harkens back to our friend, Mr. Zora Arcus Duntoff, who was a uh, a brilliant engineer who, who came to Chevrolet with, with the goal of advancing the Corvette program. Um, him and his brother, uh, used to make the Arden cylinder heads for Ford flatheads and all kinds of cool stuff. So maybe it's Zora racing. ZR Zora racing. That's, that's my guess. Cause I, I don't think it's an RPO code, you know, like LT five or LS six. I mean, I I guess it's like Z 71. I mean, I guess it, it could, it could be the rpo code for the super bad the super baddest corvette uh Uh but you're suggesting it stands for something so that's my guess okay kevin says zora racing all right duly noted sir. yeah i don't know about that but duly noted that's what i got all right all right not a bad guess yeah makes sense the way you explain it all your guesses make sense well, I don't just guess willy-nilly. I know. True. No, you, you, you definitely <laughs> diagram the, the question. Uh, maybe one day I just will willy-nilly a guess. That might be kind of fun. Uh, it works for me all the time. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> if we had a running scorecard, <laughs> we, we could see how well that truly worked. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Uh, all right. So I'll reciprocate with a trivia question. And... Uh, and, and I think this came out of a recent episode of Muscle Car of the Week. We were looking at a car that had a factory um, AM FM stereo unit and an A-track player. And we tend to call those things out because, you know, 60s muscle cars, true ones didn't have a whole lot of options, you know. Right. In fact, we were joking about the uh, Hemi Dart episode where we mentioned that it doesn't have lane departure warning and, you know, <laughs> guidance and all that right. kind of stuff. It's a Hemi Dart for crying out loud. <clears throat> right. 
And that one had no radio. But anyway, the, the AM FM <clears throat> radio made me think of something that I used to have in a in an 87 Oldsmobile. And it was AM stereo. AM stereo and FM stereo. Really? Yes. Oh, I know where this is going now already, just by that. <laughs> <laughs> right in the toilet. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the trivia question is, <laughs> uh, what what was the name of the standard for AM stereo? And judging by your <laughs> your deep familiarity with you AM, don't know <laughs> your deep familiarity with AM stereo already, uh, this will be an easy one. <laughs> <laughs> really? Well, there goes that one. Yeah, and yeah, I'll even buy some time for you. Apologize to our listener. Uh, but but the uh, the AM stereo thing was interesting uh, because music, you know, since the '60s, FM has been where the music lives because it's stereo and it sounds great. AM Correct. is always mono, and so it's reserved for talk radio and news and mm-hmm. stuff. But that's not really where the money is, you know. And 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 broadcasting, if you can get a good music audience, uh, you can sell commercial time, get a big audience. Not to say the talk right. stations don't don't do that. Mm-hmm. So there's only so much space in the radio uh, spectrum to broadcast. So mm-hmm. uh, I believe part of that motivation to tune up the sound of AM was to be able to play music. And they developed this AM stereo concept, I think, in the mid-70s, actually. And uh, it hung around for a while. And um, there's a couple stations still doing it today, as a matter of fact. But it had a name. There was a standard. And that, that's the question. I'd like to phone a friend, please. <laughs> well, you can call Willie or Nilly. <laughs> Your phone's going to ring any second, buddy. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, what is the name of the AM stereo standard? Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. Well, you spare no expense in coming up with these really rough ones. Um, well, to save the, the agony of our listener, I'll say, um, dual band AM. Dual band AM. I like that. Yeah. Could have been. Thank you. Yeah. It could have been it. Could be. You know what? It should be. It might be. It should be. (laughs) Telling you that right now. All right. Noted. I'm sorry. I, uh... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> this, is, this is something that I thought was a little, a little more, uh, less, a little less trivial than apparently it is, but uh, it is what it is. Yeah, it is what it is. Yeah. So moving, we're going to talk about this after the show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> moving on. Moving on. Uh, a lot of events going on. You know, the the Hot Rod Power Tour just wrapped up the other day. It sure did just wrap up, and what a cool route it took this year. I mean. Right through the heart of America, like it always does, but, you know, starts in North Carolina, winds its way up through um, um, Virginia and Kentucky and Tennessee and um, Indiana and then ends up in Ohio. I mean, that's that's some nice driving. Yeah, it is. And it, and it rained. Yeah, yeah, I understand it rained quite a bit. Yeah, but which is nobody's fault. But that, that's part of the beauty right. of the tour. You know, you're going to get what you're yeah. going to get. So you got to prepare for anything. Mm-hmm. And it ended up at uh, at Norwalk, right? At, at Correct. Yeah, at Summit Motorsports Park in Norwalk. Yeah, and that that used to be what was the name of that before it was Summit? Was that Norwalk uh, uh, Raceway Park or something? And I, I shoot, I don't remember. All I'm thinking of, you know, I grew up in Ohio. You think I would know this? What do you um, think? All I can th- all I can think of is Thompson um, mm. Thompson Motor Drag Raceway. Uh, I don't- I'm not sure it was that, but that's not it. No, but that because that was in Thompson, Ohio, not Norwalk. Yeah, I might be able to tell you here. Um, Nor or uh, Norwalk was the last stop of the 1996 Hot Rod Power Tour, which Is was uh, right? the first one I was ever on. Get out of here! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Paul yeah. and I did that one. Yeah, I remember you were on. It was the second Power Tour, wasn't it? Right. Ninety five was the the first one, and right. I've, I've got a. Hanging in my garage here, I've got a whole pile of credentials from different events and stuff. And somewhere in here is one of the badges we got 
from the uh, 96 power tour and it probably has the name of the park on it but uh i can't find it right now but anyway um somebody was saying did you did you see a final car count on long haulers this year um I, well of course uh, was it four thousand I think it was somewhere around there. I mean, I know like over over six thousand registered. Uh, I don't know how many completed long haul. Hmm. It was. Uh, it's just unbelievable because when, when getting back to that ninety six tour, I think we had thirty seven cars go long haul. Gee whiz, thirty seven. And before that, in ninety five, ninety five was just kind of a pop up thing. It wasn't really publicized, and right. I think there was like seventeen or eighteen that went the whole hmm. way. Talk about getting in on something on the ground floor, man. Not that it benefited me, you know, monetarily. I guess it did because no. that's how I ended up getting my job at Hot Rod and starting all this stuff. So yeah, right. yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. Plus, I mean, it's it's cool. Yeah, so many cool stories that we've you know you've told on the on the show as well, and uh, you and Paul and and the driving that uh, that junk pile Cavalier. <laughs> yeah. And every, yeah. And everybody signed the hood. <laughs> so that's beautiful. Game changer for uh, for yeah. us doing that. You know, and and today there's. There's probably a hundred cars that get signed this, you know, now. Oh, for sure. Yeah. For sure. And Paul was number one. That's crazy. How about he that? He should still have that car. At least have the hood clear coated and hanging in his garage. You know, somewhere we have the the clear plastic trophy of the best beater. Is that right? I think he's got that still. And and we have a few pictures of the car. So there there is some memories of that thing. The car is long gone, but yeah. Um, Summit Motorsports Park, formerly Norwalk Raceway Park. And Norwalk that? Dragway. So I yep. was right. Yes, sir, you were, as always. <laughs> yeah, dang it. Trivia question, my, my foot. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that was fun back then, and it's fun now. It's just such a different experience now. And, and I got to tell you one thing that is, that's a little bit surprising to me um, – so I did it in 96, I did part of 97, did all of 98 when it was East and West, did it all of 99, East and West, I did 2000, 2001, 2, 3 uh, as an employee. So mm-hmm. I was kind of cheating a little bit, um, but still tried to bring my own car when I could and, and all that kind of stuff. And 96 and 7, I was a spectator like, like everybody else. And it, it was neat because you got some swag. Some people right. hung, you gave out some t-shirts. I still have some. Mm-hmm. I have my 96 long hauler t-shirt. I have a, uh, a Boyd's shirt. Really? Yeah. I've got, uh, something from split fire spark plugs. Uh, uh, you know, nice. and, and Kelly's like, you know, that, that, that shirt's 25 years old now. It's maybe time to, to let it go. Nope. <laughs> no. To which I say no. No, I still have T-shirts from when I was in the Air Force. There you go. Yeah, yeah, they're and important. They, don't, they sure as hell don't fit, but I still have them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I could still get these things on. I, I, not that I would wear them in public, you know, but I can, I can get them on. Mm-hmm. But you know, they they invented more and more things, you know, tchotchkes and and swag items to give away. And and the latest round, uh, I'm going to say in '98 or '9, they came up with the magnet. Uh, collection in which at each stop you'd get a magnet and then all of a sudden they would be pieced together to uh, to make something cool as as Mike opens up the GTO and busts out his my magnet 2010 magnet of the state of Iowa fantastic that's right but look yeah. it's got a GTO on it it does have a GTO on it yeah even the right year it's a 60 like. a gold 66 oh 66 yeah cool yeah yeah Newton Iowa at the Iowa Speedway yeah so somewhere I have uh Right over there, I have a map of the United States magnet set with all the magnets on it. You know, from, from oh, right on. Participant. Yeah, it was cool. And, and this year, um, Holly sponsored a, a big part of the tour, and they had our friend Brian Stupski do the artwork on the magnets for the long haulers for each each state, and they are so cool. Oh yeah, uh, because you know his, his ability as a designer and an artist is insane, yeah. and it's kind of a it almost looks kind of like a roulette wheel with cars around it and, you know, all the different states. But what I find interesting, I mean, it's a super cool thing, but because we have social media now and people can communicate much easier, uh, we're seeing a lot of people that didn't get all their magnets. And you oh, would yeah? think that that's the only reason why they went. 
<laughs> it's amazing uh, what what can set somebody off. Yeah, and it's like, yeah. hey, you know, I was there, and, and I didn't get my magnet, and this guy's got two of them, and, you know. <laughs> He's yeah, got my yeah. magnet. Yeah, really. And it's like, really? That's, that, that's. Yeah. That's, that's what's, what's stuck in your craw. Right. That's, that's the problem. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> these people are going back and forth, and it's like, you know, you kind of forget the purpose uh, of, of being on the road and hanging out with cool people and mm-hmm. seeing cars and seeing the great USA. And that beautiful drive that you were talking about. And they're all talked mm-hmm. off about the magnet. So, I don't know. Yeah. Eh, you know, f- first world hot rodder problems, I guess. Totally. Totally. Mm-hmm. You know, because uh, I honestly have met, I met people on that that first 96 tour that I, I still talk to today, you know, and, and some more often than others. But um, mm. they're, they're other industry people, you know, like yourself. Amen, brother. Amen. Testify. <laughs> Testify. <laughs> and, and other people that uh, don't work in the industry that have, you know, other types of jobs. And, and a lot of us have been able to reconnect on Facebook and, and uh, you know, right. ha- hadn't seen them, you know, since, but now mm-hmm. see them on Facebook. Yeah. To that point, what, what I really dig is is kind of the, the opposite effect where people kind of get to know each other through Facebook and they finally get to meet in person on the power tour. Mm, yeah, yeah. I, I think that I think those are pretty cool stories. Like, yeah, I've been we've been a part of this group for you know ten years, and now we get to get to finally hang out and you know drive our cars and have a great time. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. And your car is a lot nicer or not as nice as it looks in the pictures on your Facebook page. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, you know, I haven't taken any recent pictures of it. Uh, that's why I don't take mine out to that event. You know, I don't want people to see them in person. They're like, oh. That's a letdown. <laughs> <laughs> Guy owns a resto shop. You think you have a nicer car? Yeah, the plumber with the leaky pipes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. Yep. Well, that's 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 perfect. That's how it's supposed to be. But that's uh, mm. th- that's cool. That um, the other the other thing that I noticed right out of the box was unfortunately a couple of cars got got lifted. Yeah, right my away. first night, like yeah. five out of a hotel parking lot. I yeah, heard. Yeah, not not cool. Yeah. So what I what I will tell people is, and it's something that we do in our own shop. Um, uh-huh. There's a a GPS device called the Tile. It's just this oh, little yeah. plastic heard of the tile. chip key ring right. thing. Yeah, and uh, uh, we put them in all of our customers' cars that stay there, so that if anything happens, we can track them. And right. and you could just tape the thing to the back glass you know and yep. nobody's gonna look for it nobody knows what it is mm-hmm. and it's like 20 20 bucks and there you go so yeah i saw pictures of people that were chaining their cars together on power holy tour. cow yeah and some kind that, of ridiculous that's, that's pretty heavy-handed right you know and it's like yeah i mean i get it but yeah there's better ways right um there's a guy on this Pontiac on the performance years Pontiac form that I'm on. He will actually sleep in his car mm-hmm. when he's on the on the power tour, mm-hmm. and he says, "You know, I I recline the seat. It's comfortable. Everything's fine. Never had my car stolen." Right, because nobody so. wants to get near it because of the smell. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever works, man. Whatever works. You know, there used to be kind of. Um, People would trade off nights, you know, if you if you had a group of people and you're all going to the same hotel, you know, one guy might stay up and watch the parking lot that night. Yeah. And then be a passenger the next day and somebody else would do it, you know. Yeah. Uh, which isn't a bad idea. And, uh, you know, you're you're in the parking lot half the night anyway on those events, hanging out. Right. And- I mean, it's sad that that has to be an idea, but it's for what it is, it's not a bad idea. Well, when you got you know what I mean? that many cars coming through towns, you just yeah. you don't know. So, but yeah, but I recommend yeah. the uh, the GPS stuff because some people were saying, yeah, leave your buddy's phone in the car, you know, and right? Track so you can the track phone. the phone, right? Uh, but that's kind of a bummer to to have to release the phone if you gotta you know talk to the family or something, uh, right? But those little tile chips are neat. So, and there's other brands too. I'm not trying to plug that thing, but right, right. Mm, you know what needs to happen is. I was just thinking about this today, and I think I thought it would be cool is get this next uh, one go. of get the future this. power tours. Oh yeah, because the, 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 this is going to cost you a lot of money. So, <laughs> oh, <great. laughs> 
<laughs> you get the whole, you close your shop down, the whole shop goes on a power tour together. It's a great idea. From, yeah, from the whole, the whole shebang, long haul, the whole thing. Well, you know, we kind of do that already. And uh, right, of course you do. Well, God damn it. <laughs> no, but what we do is uh, is every day right around noon we shut the shop down and everybody walks next door to the lunchroom together. Is that that's your power tour? Yeah, yeah that's kind of. <laughs> but we do it every day, so it you know it's, it, it's actually far longer. <laughs> <laughs> By the end of the year, we really got some miles under our belts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice. That would nice. be awesome. Um, you're right. That would be a, a kind of a pricey adventure, but uh, yeah, it totally would be. It, it takes a special breed mm. to want to do that trip. True. It's an adventurous spirit um, that can plan it and get away, and of course, finance mm-hmm. it and everything else. Right. Because uh, it's not your normal vacation, but for a gearhead, it's it's a must do. And I'm looking yeah. forward to doing the whole thing again sometime. Um, it just always happens, you know, in in June. End of May, beginning mm-hmm. of June, where right. uh, our business it, it, it usually just gets very, very busy, mm-hmm. and and I, I'm not in a position. I mean, could you imagine the mutiny if I said, "Yeah, <laughs> I'm going on power tour"? You guys, <laughs> bye. <laughs> yeah, enjoy, see you guys. Enjoy the lunch room, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll have to figure out the the right way to do that. Yeah. I mean, the most legs I've ever gone on so far, three legs. And that was a lot. That was, mm. that took a lot out of me. Yeah. But I still want to do a full, a long haul mm-hmm. at least once whenever this heat behind me is up for it. It will be. It's coming. Yeah. It will be. It's it's going to be. Yeah. It's just not today. But that's okay. I accept that. You'll get there. It's all right. Uh, to me, the... There's several journeys. There's there's the journey to get to the start, then there's the actual trip, right? And then there's the journey home, and mm-hmm. it's, it's like three separate trips, you know, because you're totally amped yeah. up and out of your mind on your way there, you know. Oh yeah, because you've been working on the car and staying up all night and planning everything, and and then and then you know you're just trying to get there as fast as you can, and then when the trip actually starts, it's it's a whirlwind. It's it's a blur. There's so much to look at. There's so much to see. There's so many people and everything. And if you have any kind of weather, you know, there's all the challenges of getting in and out of the place and getting your magnet. Got to get your magnet. <laughs> and, and, That's uh, a must. That be, is a must. Be part of the meetings and all that stuff. Right. And, and, and helping people on the side of the road and enjoying the scenery. There's just so mm-hmm. much to do, uh, especially yeah. if the tour goes to a racetrack and you're going to run a few laps or, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. And then the way home, it's like, now your your ass has been kicked for months leading up to it, and right. then the actual trip, and then now you got to get home. And when we did uh, Norwalk, living in Chicago, that was, you know, it was a pretty good drive, seven hours probably, six, seven hours yeah, to get back. Um, and I think Paul and I both slept all the way, because <laughs> I don't remember any of that trip going on. <laughs> Uh, but, <laughs> right but on. when those years, when, um, so one year the, the power tour ended in, uh, Panama city, Florida. Oh, and I had to drive back to Los Angeles. Ooh, dude. Yeah. Yeah. So it was, it was jump on the 10 across the Florida panhandle and then into, mm. you know, Louisiana and Alabama and then Texas. Right. So, mm. You know, when you're going on the road and you're looking at the mile marker signs and sometimes they count up and sometimes they count down, depending on which way you're going. Right. Well, going east to west across Texas, you start at the high sign. The, uh-huh. the highest mile marker sign is on the east end. And it was like 549. Oh, <laughs> Oh, 548. 48. <laughs> 99 bottles oh, of beer on the wall. Man, 99 it was bottles brutal. of beer. It was such a long road, you know, and uh, I think we ended up sleeping in a gas station or something for a while and just oh, crashed yeah. out. And that's, that's a whole nother story. But. Mm-hmm. 
Man, that, that's a trip in and of itself. It was. That's and then you get home journey. and get back into action and, and you, you yeah. missed out on three weeks of the world. You know, what happened yep. while you're gone? Because nobody pays attention to world events. You know, you're on power tour. Right. The heck right. And, and you get back probably at um, like midnight, one o'clock in the morning and you got to be at work the next that's morning right. at seven, seven or eight because nobody planned for that. And no. Then you just, it's even worse. Yes. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. Of but, course, then why not? Exactly. Mm-hmm. It was totally worth it and, and <laughs> yeah. lots of fun. So, yeah, I, I'm glad that so many people are still doing it. 25th year this year. Yeah, oh, that's right. This is the 25th year. Man. That's scary. Isn't it, though? And it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I yeah. don't know how they are able to keep all those moving pieces from colliding. I'm sure they don't. I'm sure there are some failures and you know hiccups along the way there just has to be something that big dealing with that many people that many moving parts yeah totally so. um but there have been a lot of cool spinoffs too uh neat neat events that aren't anywhere near as big but are mm. just as fun the uh, good guys hall of fame tour is one where i think that's limited to 50 cars maybe oh really uh but they they manage it um to where th- when you sign up, I think you get all the hotels right away. I think they, they concierge all that stuff for you and they'll help you with transport with your car and, and like there's shop tours along the way and, and different kind of stuff. It's not, you know, cause power tour, you're kind of on your own. You sign up and right. You know, you got to get your rooms. You got to, you got to, mm-hmm. you got to wipe your own nose. But uh, on mm-hmm. this other one, I think it's uh it's far more expensive too. It's, you know, Oh, I believe it. Yeah, to pay for all that stuff, but it, it, it's another level of service, which is kind of nice. Takes some of the mm. some of the stress out of it, you know. But it also perhaps takes a little bit of that adventure spirit out. Uh, yeah, possibly, possibly. Yeah, that'd be neat to try. You also have the uh, the bandit run that uh, goes on. Yeah, I think that's kind of a a bit of a power tour esque event. Um, of course, it's just going more from. From Atlanta to Texarkana. To That's it. Yeah. Go get That's some it, cursed. man. Mm-hmm. Get some courage. Yeah. Yeah. Bring it back over. Well, there's yeah, a lot but- of different road trip type events that, uh, mm-hmm. you know, that, that don't even exist yet that I think would be kind of fun to do. Um, to me, though, just, just getting out on the road on its own is fun. That was in our bucket list thing of, you know, I was talking about driving Highway 50 just to go do right, it. Right, 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 right. And even if it was just a couple of cars, you know, by yourself, you'd have that real impact of, yes, I'm I'm on the loneliest highway by myself. But uh, mm-hmm. we'll see. Yeah, that, that'd be that'd be dynamite. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. So uh, hmm. straight out of uh, Power Tour, coming up into DeCoin for the Street Machine Nationals. Uh, that that event mm-hmm. is coming up this weekend. Kelly and I will be down there, and um, I think maybe some of our our guys, our team members, might be going. Uh, we're not having uh, quite the the presence that we've had in the past. Uh, we don't have our business is kind of strange because it's like we we build cars for customers. And of right. course, the minute the car is done, they want it back, you know, well, uh, sure. and some shops mm-hmm. actually have agreements where it's like, no, we're going to hold your car for three months and sh- tour it around and, mm. you know, try to get business or whatever. And, and I just don't, I don't think anybody likes that as a customer standpoint. If your car's done, mm-hmm. you want it. <laughs> right. Right. I mean, the customer needs to agree to that beforehand, though, don't they? Oh, yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. But but I think it's different because in the very beginning, when your car is, you're just starting this project and, <clears throat> and the shop's like, yeah, well, then we're going to tour it around. You're thinking, yeah, cool, great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then you're right. you're waiting however long it takes to build. And it's like, is my car done yet? Is my car done yet? Is my car done mm-hmm. yet? And then it's like, yeah, it's done. See you in three months after we get done having fun with it. And it's like, oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I always wondered about that. Um I would see, I'd see some of those um, uh, car sh- uh, TV shows. Um, oh yeah, Overhaul was famous for it. Yeah, and and you'd see, you know, the car the car would be done, but then you'd see it parading around at different different events, mm-hmm. or it may be on some other show. And I'm like, how how is that possible? I thought it was this other guy's car, but I mean, you you, you just kind of you know let the cat out of the bag, so to speak, and you know, if if it's arranged beforehand, then then that's how it is. But it's kind of kind of interesting. 
and yeah, weird at the same time. The TV things, a lot of them have a network contract where, you know, the network obviously wants to promote the show. And the best way to do that is have the car on the street, you know, so right. some, some of those people didn't get them back for a year. Whoa. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, but there's other people. Skin. Yeah, I know it's, it, it, it's pretty intense, but there are mm. other people that um, don't mind a shop kind of managing their project, you know? F- so for example, the chicane, uh, 62, uh, Chevy that rad rides built for, uh, billet specialties for Glenn Grozich, the guy that owns billet specialties. That car was done in 2003, 2000, mm-hmm. t- I think 2003. And I think mm-hmm. today it's still a rad rides. I think it just lives what? there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, they, they maintain it. It's, it's there like all the time. And and Glenn doesn't live wow. that far from them, so he can just buzz down and pick it up and go. Um, oh, okay. But that's that's kind of their deal. So it's really nice to have this, you know, flagship car in house to show people all the time. You know? Yeah. So that's pretty cool. I guess if yeah, we, that's, a, that's a good if, arrangement. If we had more of a showroom type uh, setting in our our facility, and we had a local customer that was cool, you know, mm-hmm. I, I would gladly, you know, kind of technically store it, mm-hmm. you know, but store it on display. Right. You know, and then yeah, give yeah. them access, you know. Yeah, there's a, actually there's a local um, restoration shop out, out out by me that do something like that. On their storefront, they have like a, a glass garage door, and there's a car, typically a customer car, that's parked there that you can see from the road when you drive by. It's kind of neat, kind of a neat deal. Yeah, yeah. So, and and it had, changes up from time to time. We the 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 previous owner of our building... Um, had always talked about having glass roll up doors in the front. Uh, but I, you know, my dad was a police officer and I just have this security uh-huh. concern that, right. well, you don't know what's in there. It doesn't hurt you. You know, it's a good point. Not that we live in a high, I, we're very fortunate, you know, red, Bud, Illinois is not a high crime area at all, right. but uh-huh. we're on a pretty busy highway and people come through that don't necessarily mm-hmm. live there a lot. So, right. Uh, yeah. Better safe than sorry. Yeah. 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 Mm hmm. Oh man! But yeah, that's, so that that's, should be that should be a good time at the street nas for you then. Yeah, so we're just gonna kind of spectate, which is cool. We're gonna go talk to oh, people, even and better. Check out cars and and uh, meet meet with some people. The the, the street machine nationals event uh, changed ownership, I guess last year, and is now owned by the Bonnie Air Corporation. And, right. Uh, so I'm I'm excited to see what they bring to the table as far as uh, what they're gonna do with the event. Um, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of pretty, pretty cool industry people that will be there, um, kind of working on plans and schemes and ideas for, uh, for the street machine national series of events. And, uh, uh, it'll be great to see. So, uh, fortunately Kelly and I are, are privy to some of these conversations and, and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, we'll see, see if there's anything we can do to help or who knows. Yeah. Right on, man. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad you get to be a spectator. I like when you guys get to go out and and have some R and R. For well, as hard as you guys work, it's it's nice. It's a nice respite, I'm sure. It is, and and it's funny to to go to a car show as a spectator and not have to worry about you know keeping the customer's car polished up and presentable and you know safe and secure and all that. Uh, kind of the cool one is that at Good Guys Columbus, which is coming up in July. Uh, they're doing a 69 Camaro anniversary display and it's a big indiv- in, uh, invitational of significant 69 Camaros and the comp cams Camaro that we built a few years ago is one of the cars that's going to be in it. Sweet. It is sweet, man. Uh, so, and, and even sweeter is comp is bringing it <laughs> and, and, and they're looking after it. Uh, so <laughs> right on, we, we hope to be able to go to that one as kind of quasi spectators, but still have uh-huh. a, you know, being able to show off some of our work there in Columbus, mm-hmm. Columbus, Ohio. Right on, right on. Yeah, yeah. We saw that. Uh, I saw that car the first time you had it out there at, um, up in Wisconsin. That was uh car craft summer nets. Yeah. We were lucky enough to have a pro builders spot up there that year. Yeah. Yeah, and we did a we did a show from there. Yeah, wow. Well. Yeah, that was cool. That was cool. That's yeah, a great had a family car. Out there, it was a good time. Oh, yeah. it was a great car. Yeah, I really liked it. Yeah, it came out nice. It's unusual to see I, a white, a white muscle car. 
Yeah, but that's what makes it cool. Yeah, it was. It was totally. Yeah. Colors, colors, all the thing, you know, and and uh, it reminds me that uh, speaking of you know colors that are not common but super cool, our friend uh, Frank Zimkowski with his Warwick Blue GTO uh, just had a diecast release of that thing. How cool is that? How nuts is that? <laughs> My gosh, Frank. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Jeez, this guy's living with a lucky star shining over his house at night for crying out loud, Frank. That is, it is Love so it. cool because... Yeah, it is. I couldn't be more thrilled for him. Because we knew Frank before Frank was Frank, you know. <laughs> now he's got die casts right. and big hero at McCacken and, you know, him and his son have two Franks detailing and all this stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, we, we got in on the ground floor on that deal, Frank. Damn. Don't forget, Frank, That's we right. get friend prices when we go to two Franks <laughs> car detailing. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's it. I don't know what the hell proving, I'm talking about. <laughs> proving that uh, being a listener of our show is not a total waste of time. You know? <laughs> like we had anything to do with Frank's involvement. <laughs> right. and getting so Everybody a, a else, step it up. Let's go. Come <laughs> yeah. on, step it up. No, but that's awesome that uh, uh, there's a, a, I guess it's a one... A one eighteenth, maybe, and a one, and then a one sixty fourth. There's a little one too. There's two sizes. Right, right, and I'm sure he'll be able to correct us um, on please, the sizes if, if please, we're off. Yes, please, yes. Frank. And, and uh, so Frank likes to uh, likes to listen to the show. We still haven't figured out what's wrong with him, but he loves to listen to our show yeah. and uh, provide commentary, which is great. He always you mm-hmm. know, kind of real time answers the trivia questions. And uh, we met him in person in Chicago at the McCacken show, and it was great. Him and his family were great to hang out with. Yes. And his car is just unbelievably <sighs> clean. Mwah. And it it really is. I mean, he I couldn't see a thing wrong with it with with, with that judge that he has that sixty nine judge. It's just just impeccable, absolutely yeah. impeccable. It is and N- nicer than showroom. It it couldn't have happened to a nicer guy in a nicer car. Uh, to be immortalized in a diecast. So hopefully Frank uh, on the Facebook page will put some comments in about, uh, and maybe put the link in where people can get one. Uh, Cause uh, that, that's worth it. I'd love to have one of those myself. Yeah, please. There was, I, I believe there were, I think 16 convertibles of that model made uh, the diecast. I think really? I saw somewhere. Yeah. And they're all spoken for now, but it's quite, Quite the limited edition. Sixteen diecasts. Yeah, for uh, of convertibles. Yeah, 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 yeah. sixteen convertibles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the Warwick blue, like that. Yeah, that that made a, a Frank's car. It was, I think, modeled after Frank's car. Even though his is a hard top, I think they made a convertible out of it. But Frank can clarify that. Yes. I may be completely off base. But I don't. I don't think I'm completely off base. Well, generally, um, but on the, maybe g- not this generally, time. yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I got like a toe on the base. That's about it. <laughs> yes, that's that's super cool. I was I was unaware of that. Uh, that's neat. Yeah, he has some really nice cars. He has that 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 beautiful. Uh, was that the Torino? Yeah, he's got a white uh, Torino with the blue laser stripe convertible. Oh yeah, yeah, that, that is gorgeous too. And and uh, and Frankie, his son Frankie, has that Grand National. Yep, yep. Heck of a car family. Oh, totally. And Frank's had some really killer cars over the years, too. I mean, he had a Z16 Chevelle. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Frank's the real deal. Yeah. He's, he's a genuine article. He, he had posted some of the pictures of some of his cars that he's had on, on our V8 TV forum a long time ago. And mm-hmm. uh, I was like, wow, you are kidding me. And I think he was actually halfway yeah. looking for it again. I don't know if, if that one's accounted for. They made 201 of them, so wow. who knows? Who knows? Yeah, I hope he finds it if he is. Not many people can say they own a Z16 SS That's... 396 Malibu. Yeah. Whew. But, uh, you know, how, how insane would that be to, to have, you know, your car done as a, a die cast? I mean, oh, I've, a long time ago, I found a, uh, a promo model, a plastic <clears throat> promo model of a 62 Galaxy convertible. And, of course, I blew it apart and painted it the same color as mine. And uh-huh. and uh, I actually s- scaled down the June 1962 Hot Rod magazine and threw it on the front seat, you know, and did a little oh, nice. diorama kind of thing. But it's not anything somebody can go to Walmart <clears throat> and buy, you know. Yeah, those die-cast models are cool. I have I have a couple um, uh, just stock ones for uh, 66 G, two 66 GTOs, gold ones. Um, that my dad had that I was able to get uh, after he passed away, and I mm. one of them was one of them was in the box still, and it's still in the box. 
Well, the other one was out, and I have it out once in a while and kind of look at it, and it's kind of neat. But those are really cool models. You know, the, the hood opens, the doors open. It has good detail in the engine bay. Mm-hmm. They're, they're pretty slick models. My so. uh, Kind of my prized uh, die cast is the 124th scale Cadzilla. Ooh, wow. Yeah, and that, that came out in 97, I'm going to say. I had just moved to California, uh-huh. and... Uh, um, I think it was part of the Hot Wheels Legends series, if I'm not mistaken. I think it was made by Mattel. And Ooh. it was like 125 bucks. I mean, it was expensive. What? Yeah, it was crazy. And I, I remember I saw the ad in, in Hot Rod, and I was working there at the time, and I, was, I saw what's called a proof sheet, which is the an unstapled copy of the magazine before it's released. They, they okay. show you a proof sheet to make sure that everything is, <clears throat> you know... Yeah, all the uh, ads are in the right spot, the articles uh, are in the uh, right spot. I guess a tear sheet is the more yeah. applicable term. But um, I'm flipping through this thing, and I'm like, you got to be kidding me. And it was a two-car set. It was a 124 scale and then a, uh, a 164th, you know, regular Hot Wheels size car. Right. And uh, I bought them. And one of the other uh, uh, sales guys that worked at, at Peterson Publishing at the time, he sold for the off-road magazines. He was... Uh, he was probably in his late forties, early fifties at that point and married and, you know, kids and all that stuff and, and a house. And I was just, you know, a mid twenties kid at that point. So right. the 125 bucks, although I didn't, I didn't make that much money. It, it's not like mm-hmm. I was taking money out of my kid's mouth, you know, to buy right. this thing. Sure. And this guy's name was Michael Kirby and, and Kirby pulled me aside and he's like, you know, and I was expecting to get a lecture from this dude. I'm expecting him to say, you know, what the hell are you wasting your money on that for? But he said, uh, that's really cool. You know, you, you, you did you did well. You got it. Why not? You know, enjoy it. And he said, you'll probably have that thing forever. And and here we are it's, 22 years later, and it's still sitting on the shelf over there. That's terrific. Yeah. Do you have it in your garage? Uh, no, it's in the house, but I'm thinking oh, okay. as my garage evolves, uh, uh-huh. I, I, maybe I should make a little display for some of the the die cast yeah. stuff. Yeah, maybe I'd love to see that. Next time I'm out 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 by you, I'd love to take a look at that. Yeah, it's sure. cool. Uh, unfortunately, I think it needs a bath. I think it's it's kind of dusty. It wasn't in a case. Yeah. It was out. Oh, is that right? Time. So uh I'll call That's two right. Franks and have them take care of it for me. There you go, Frank. You just got more business. Congratulations. See? Being a listener actually pays dividends. <laughs> <laughs> How about oh, man. That? That, that? That's an old, that's an overselling adjective right there. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> but I think it's pretty cool that uh, that that Frank and his son Frankie, you know, are both into the the hobby. You mentioned, you know, your dad had the GTO before you, and in, in my case, my dad bought a '62 Galaxy and bought this this same car that I have now, and yeah, you know, I ended up with it, and we ju- we just passed Father's Day, and there was a lot of the Father's Day shows. Right, uh, you know, going around and I, it's uh, I often wonder about is that father son thing continuing on with with today's cars and today's kids. You know, I don't know. Well, it, it certainly is. It seems to be with Frank and Frankie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, that kid seems to be all into it. So that's yeah. the, there's a lot of hope still. I think for the hobby, um, well, maybe maybe different cars as these kids get older. Um, but as long as they're still in it and, you know, in the hobby, uh, they see cars as not just a means of transportation, but, you know, a statement of oneself and a true art form. I think uh, the hobby's in good shape. I think in Frank and Frankie's case, you know, Frankie's got a super hot 86 Grand National, too. I mean, it's yeah, just not. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. Yeah. It's not it, a Hyundai. It's tough. It's tough not to be a car guy with, with that uh, at your beck and call. Yeah. I'll yeah. tell you what. But it's um, it's really something how, you know, our dads, what our dads have done, really influence um, how we see cars. Because you know, my dad had that '65 GTO, and had I not seen that picture when I was a little kid, you know, you know, if if he had a Falcon, maybe I'd love Falcons. Maybe I'd be a Mustang guy. Who knows? Mm-hmm. But uh, mm-hmm. but. Uh, or, or it could be a genetic thing where he he really dug the styling cues of, of the Pontiac, how they were back then, and it really resonated with me as well. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I hope that that does, like you said, I hope that does continue with, uh, with uh, younger kids today with, with their fathers or, or father figures or whoever is influencing them um, towards the, you know, the car hobby. Well, I mean, your daughter is now driving, your oldest, so, She you know, is. Yeah. Is she well, into Chevy you know Cruises what? now? <laughs> no, 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 no. But, uh, but I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, you know, they, they've never really shown a, a ton of, when they were little, little kids, you know, toddlers, they really liked the GTO and they, you know, they, they call it daddy's golden car and they was, and they liked riding in it and it was cool. And, um, unfortunately, since it's been kind of, you know, belly up for so many years, um, they really don't seem like they're really into it. But my wife was actually, great timing. My wife was telling me a story last night. She was taking my daughter, Grace, uh, somewhere, our older girl, the one who's driving. And they were coming back. And my wife says, we passed, there was like some 65 Mustang looking car, red with the white stripes down it. And it was driving the opposite way, and, and Grace turns and says, ooh, that was a cool car. Nice. Thank God. There's hope. There's yeah, hope. Yeah, right on. Oh, so that made me feel good. It made me feel real good. So just got to work on the other one now, the younger one. Yeah. Well, I mean, I so. think you're right. Once the GTO becomes something that is, you know, not just in the way. and <laughs> Not and, a big uh, shelf. Right. And an mm-hmm. animate object again. Right. And, it's going to make all the difference. I mean, yeah. in my case, it's pretty cool because uh, Kelly and I don't have kids, but um, Kelly's niece, um, our niece, uh, Brittany, right. is now 19. She's going to be 20 this year. And oh for whatever reason, she took a big shine to my 70 Riv. And she loves the car. And uh, uh, I think we've talked about it before where she she shoots me a text every once in a while and says, you know, hey, can I take it out for a ride? And, and I mm-hmm. say, absolutely, you know. And, yeah. Uh, but, but the flip side of that is because um, I fully believe there's far more to it than just being able to get the keys from dad and go drive the car or, or Uncle Kevin in this case. So mm-hmm. we have some maintenance to do on the Riv. And uh, Brittany's going to get her hands dirty because – good we got to change a couple axle bearings we got to do an oil change we got to put some bushings in the front suspension and uh she's gonna do that so i'm certain you know i'll I'll be there helping of course and guiding but right uh and it's funny because a lot of times you think you want you want the kid to work on it to build a sense of appreciation for the car right correct but she already appreciates it. That, that's not mm-hmm. the challenge here. Now it's just familiarity and understanding that it's going to need something uh-huh. and you got to listen to it and pay attention kind of thing. And, uh, yeah. and then I think that will help with, uh, you know, the, when she takes it out, she's careful with it already, but now right. at least she'll have a, a stronger connection, you know, with the car and, mm-hmm. and it's cool. Yeah, that is cool. I mean, uh, I think she really, she'd really appreciate give, being given the opportunity to really participate in the, um, in the in the maintenance and upkeep of that car, and kind of almost feeling like a little bit of pride of ownership when it's all done. Yeah. Even though even though it's you know, actually not her car, but you know she'll have an emotional attachment to it where she really digs taking care of it, and that's and that's and I think that's fantastic. Well, and that that's the goal because like now mm-hmm. she so my brother in law John um, mm-hmm. he he works on cars all the time and the two of them her daily driver is a, a Honda and John's a a phenomenal crash technician he bought this thing wrecked and they straightened it out and painted it and oh, everything wow. oh yeah yeah uh, my wife's family is all about. You have to basically build your first car. <laughs> All right. All right. That's uh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Kelly had to rebuild every engine in the first couple cars she owned to be able to drive the thing because her dad would bring home something that didn't run, you know, and got it cheap and then they fix it and there you go. Uh, and taught all those same characteristics. But I mm-hmm. think the difference here is that this is purely a toy. Uh, you, there's, there's, in right. my mind, there's no pressure on getting the, car fixed to get to work tomorrow right right. and that that can be kind of a turn off you know when you're working with dad and it's like hurry up and get this thing done you know you got to get to work tomorrow and there's you know Uh stress and and that that's what's going to be different is you know 
today we're going to change the oil, and if it doesn't get done, mm-hmm. nobody's driving this thing, so it doesn't matter, you know. Right. Uh, and here's the finer points and the how and why and all that kind of stuff. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's a that's a, a perfect scenario. Yeah. Try to. Yeah, that's that's a perfect uh, you know perfect setting to to do that to do that in. So, Again, to kind yeah, of share that that appreciation for the the machine and and um, so totally. There's uh, totally. a whole lot of kids in my neighborhood. They're young, I, you know, probably mm-hmm. from 11 down to little toddlers. And we mm-hmm. were talking about, uh, we know most of our neighbors, which is good. Um, there's some we don't know, uh, but Kelly mm-hmm. and I were talking about doing uh, give a kid a ride day in the neighborhood. So I've got our Buick uh, our 62 Galaxy. Kelly's got our 54 Chevy pickup truck. Our buddy mm-hmm. Rick has his 67 Chevelle convertible. Uh, there's, you know, a handful of cars in the neighborhood that'd be kind of cool that, you know, maybe one day if we get clearance from all the parents, you know, we're going to take your mm-hmm. kid throughout the neighborhood and they get to jump from one to the next and just be cool and see what oh, it's like, man. you know. You guys would be the gods of the, the, the neighborhood. <laughs> Holy cow. Are you kidding me? Oh, <laughs> yeah. wow. So, because they've all seen them, you know, the, the, the kids in the neighborhood have seen in sure. my garage, you've seen me working on this stuff and, you know, Kelly's truck in the driveway and Rick with his door open and his lift and all that stuff. But, and, and mm-hmm. you know, we had talked before about how my experience of being on a big wheel and, and riding past the split window Corvette and the, uh, the boat tail riv and not knowing that those were different cars from my vantage point of being a little kid. Right. But you know, I didn't get a ride uh-huh. in any of them, you know, and may- maybe that would have, yeah, you know, pushed me even more into this nonsense. I don't know. You're pretty, you're pretty deep into it. I don't know how deep, how deeper you could go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah that's true. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. It, when, when I was a kid, um, our neighbor across the street had, um, a 71 uh, Mach 1 Mustang mm. in his driveway. And the engine was pulled, and um, the, the shift, it was a four-speed car, and the shifter was all, all seized up. I mean, you could, if you pulled it, you'd, like, you like move the whole transmission. So, mm-hmm. um, but he let me, he let me sit in there, and I pretend like I'm rowing the gears, and I thought that was, you know, that, that really, that was a real turn on. That was, that was really great stuff, even though we weren't going anywhere. So I, I loved it, and that's that's part of me why I, I kind of have a soft spot for the for those big Mustangs, those big 71, 72, 73 Mustangs. I kind of I kind of dig the look of them, um, yep. the fastbacks. Yeah, I thought they were really cool, just mostly because of that 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 experience when I was a young kid. Well, it sticks, you know, uh, totally. It really it really does. It really does. And if you if you're able to do this, take a ride, take a kid on a ride thing in your neighborhood, th- these kids, I. You know I'm not kidding, and you know it for sure. These kids will remember that for the rest of their days. Well, Always they'll remember that. You know, it, it, unfortunately, in today's society, you know, these cars, minimal seat belts, and, you know, it's not mm-hmm. necessarily a safe thing. Not that we're going to be out racing around or whatever, but what right. we're going to do is maybe have a neighborhood meeting with all the parents and say this is what our intention mm-hmm. is, and and yeah. you can come along, you know, although it would be cooler – probably sure. without but you know <laughs> <laughs> you're going a little fast kevin yeah going a little fast for johnny no it would be you doesn't like that fast you're driving too fast kelly <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's the truth that's the truth <laughs> funny funny sidebar she was known in the neighborhood for a while as the chicken lady <laughs> <laughs> the chicken lady. Yeah, because Kelly once was seen with her blue fifty four truck with a crate full of chickens in the back, and she was heading out to the farm. <laughs> and one of the neighbors oh, saw her beautiful. and called her the chicken lady. And then when we first uh, got that truck running, so this is probably ten years ago, uh, Kelly was right. on her way home, and she was in a hurry to go somewhere, of course, because you know that's how she is. And because her name is Kelly. Yeah, there, there was a. Uh, <laughs> a 16 year old kid in, in the neighborhood that just got her license and was driving with her mom. And Kelly was on her bumper with the 54, the blue flash you know, oh, pickup truck. Oh no. And I can see her, you know, she was probably oh. gritting her teeth saying, get out of the way. I, you know, I, I gotta get home. I gotta, and 
and the kid was freaked out and driving, you know, 12 miles an hour in the neighborhood and trying to be safe and all the rest of it. And Kelly comes home and comes winging around the corner and up in the driveway and gets out of the truck. And she's like, you know, these kids, you know, nobody teaches them how to drive. They're going slow and blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, you know, you got to be, it's probably a, a new driver and, you know, give them, give them, a, give them a break. No kidding. A few minutes later, there's a knock on the door and it's oh, this, no. this person's mother. And she said, no, that's your blue truck. And you were behind me and you were scaring my daughter and you drive like a maniac. And I just looked at her and I turned my head Mm -hmm. and I said, Kelly, (laughs) (laughs) you're absolutely right, ma'am. That was atrocious. Kelly, come over here. (laughs) That's right. And it wasn't me, (laughs) but no, no harm. Oh my goodness. Yeah. We, uh, we had a neighbor in the in the neighborhood here who he used to have pretty cool cars. He had a seventy one Chevelle and then he had a sixty nine Camaro at the same time. And he used to have this red rubber ball. And if you drove past his house too fast, he's winging this red rubber ball at your car. You know? Are you kidding? Me? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. my gosh. So, so I mean, I creep through here. You know, it's my neighborhood. I want to. Yeah, you know, I'm not trying to cause cause problems. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that was just kind of funny. So yeah, we'd have to have a little meeting with the neighborhood parents and say, Hey, this is what we want to do. And just mm-hmm. go for a little ride. And, but it would yeah. be fun. We need to get on that. I, I really think you should get, get on that. I think that would be a, a, a landmark thing to do in that neighborhood for these kids. That would be just fantastic. I wish people around here did that for, for kids. Well, just go hey, ahead. Maybe when I get this heap running, I can do it. I was just kind of thinking that. Maybe you just need to write that down on your uh, your list of things to do with the GTO. And I'm sure your daughters yeah. have friends in the hood there that, you know, you probably know mm-hmm. all the neighborhood kids too, right? I know a few of them, yep. Yeah. Yeah, yep. So I think it's a little different closer, closer to where you're at because you're – you're still a good distance from, you know, the city of Chicago, but but you're in a right one of the distant suburbs. I'm in a rural community here where everybody yeah. seems to know each other, so it's it's kind of a different story. Uh-huh. I don't think I could have pulled this sure. off in my neighborhood where I grew up. Although I knew yeah, we knew our neighbors, but uh, today, you know, yeah. it's funny a lot of people don't, don't have any clue who they live next door to, unfortunately, but Yeah, that's a problem. Um yeah, I mean, we live in a, a, a development. There's, you know, a planned development. There's 900 houses here, so of course we don't know everybody. Wow, but the, it's, yeah, um, yeah, it's 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 sizable, but the uh, it's broken up into little neighborhoods. So the neighborhood I live in is called Ashby Park, and there's there's other ones, and you kind of get to know the people around you in the neighborhood, the quote unquote, that you live in. And, and, and we're really lucky. We have really, really great neighbors and everyone kind of looks out for each other and they're, and they're, they're terrific. And, uh, I know, I know more than a few would really go for, for this, uh, take a kid on a ride, uh, thing. Well, and your buddy Robert's across the street, right? With the galaxy converter. Oh yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, He took it out for a spin yesterday. There you go. There's gotta be a couple more cars. Yeah. His boy, his boy is. Yeah, his son, he has a son named Gavin. That that kid is all into cars. <laughs> and he just doesn't stop. Oh, he's great. He's fantastic. Right on. So, and he knows all kinds of stuff. He he likes I think he likes more uh exotic imports mm-hmm. than muscle mm-hmm. cars, but yep. he's he's still into cars and that's what's cool. So, No, they're cool too. Time. I mean, I I remember uh, you know, in mm-hmm. high school, I had I had a Lamborghini Countach poster on the wall. Countach I, poster. Hell yeah. W- w- there's a poster that I, I need to get another copy of. There was a bicycle uh, made by the Klein Bicycle Company, Gary Klein. I think they were out of Oregon, uh-huh. perhaps. It was an aluminum hand-built <clears throat> TIG welded bicycle. Super oh, wow. expensive. And and I'm talking in 1987, mm-hmm. they were like three grand. You know, they were just big money, big money bicycles. And our bicycle shop in town um, sold them. So they had a couple of them hanging there. And, and a kid I went to high school with ended up buying one somehow. Uh, he didn't have the $3,000 one. but And, in fact, if you watch Seinfeld, you will see the bike hanging in the background in, in Seinfeld's apartment. Oh, it's a, yeah. It's a green Klein. Uh, Is it? Bicycle. Yeah, yeah. But uh, Klein, Klein had a poster where instead of having – 
it, it was a red Porsche, probably a 911 at this point, with a bike rack with the Klein on the top. But the picture was inverted, so it was the Klein with a rack carrying the Porsche. Ah, uh, nice. Upside down, yeah, yeah. And I, I got to find, see if I can, nice. I had that poster on the wall. I'll see if I can find one on eBay. And Yeah, in fact, I, I have... Uh, I have some photographs of the posters that were on my wall when I was in high school. I took some pictures. I think of, I've seen of my one room. of those. Yeah, I gotta see if I yeah. can. It'd be fun to put a few of those up here in the garage. Yeah, I, I think that uh, Lamborghini Countach poster was standard issue to every kid in the suburbs growing up. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Back in the eighties. Well, I yeah. think it was a fold out from Motor Trend or something. You know, probably. And, and we all stole them from the the school library. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Along with the Cheryl Teague's poster as well, yeah. next to the Countach poster. <laughs> that that wasn't in Motor Trend. I get the Fair no, Fawcett no, on the Mustang, though, on the Cobra right. 2. there you yeah. go. Yeah, yeah. Amen, that amen. Was for, that was for real. That's good stuff. All righty. Well, we've uh, we've dragged our listeners along long enough because they're all itching for this uh, trivia question. I can tell. I, I can, can feel fe- the itch. I can feel yeah. It. yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's getting hot in here. Yeah. So, all right. Uh, you go first. Yes, sir. All right, Kevin, I asked you, uh, what does the ZR in ZR1 Corvette stand for? And you very concisely uh, kind of mapped that question out, thinking, yeah, maybe it has to do with Zora Duntov, and you know, and you eventually came down to saying uh, that it was Zora Racing. And Kevin, God dang it, I can't believe it, but you got that right. Yes! Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. You I, sir, you nailed it right on the head, man. Well done, sir. Well done. I am very surprised. That brain I, of yours. I Good thought I Lord. was making that one up right there, but oh, man. it made sense. Yeah. Now, congratulations, and uh, let's deliver some more good news. Yes. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, when I get some, I will, Mike. Yeah. So my question to you was. Um, at one point, uh, AM radio was broadcast in a stereo format instead of just mono, and there was a mm-hmm. standard for that AM stereo broadcast. So what was it called? And the correct answer, you, you said uh, dual band AM, yeah, which, which yeah. is very descriptive because it's yeah. kind, kind of what it was. So I'll give you, mm-hmm. I'll give you that anyway. But it was called Sequam. 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 Yes. And uh, is that an acronym? It, it is an acronym. And, uh, well, it better be a damn good one. Well, I can tell you uh, what, what the acronym was here in a sec. Uh, I had it on my screen here, and then I just lost it. Uh, uh-huh. QAM is a, uh, an acronym uh, called Qu- uh, Quadrature AM Radio. QAM, Quadrature. And C uh, stood for Compatible Quadrature AM Radio broadcasting and and the whole deal was that there was four different companies that came up with am stereo but by the early 90s they landed on the sequam standard which was a canadian standard that got put in so anyway i had an 87 olds uh uh touring sedan an olds 98 regency touring sedan that that my dad after he retired from the police department got a job as the security and special projects manager for an insurance company and one of the things he got to do was kind of maintain some of the executive company car fleet oh cool schedule the oil changes and that kind of stuff right and one of the executives was the company had purchased this 87 olds touring sedan for this guy Mm -hmm. and uh he drove it until 94 probably and then the company sold it and i ended up with it uh it was a great car it had 50,000 miles on it it was maroon leather interior trip computer fe3 suspension 16 inch waffle wheels goodyear gt eagle gt2 tires wow. front rear sway bars upsized brakes uh and sequam am stereo you know what? The second you said quadrature, it it knocked a memory loose because I learned about quadrature amplitude modulation in the Air Force. I, I kind of figured we, you you knew this when we were talking about signal frequency mixing and stuff. They talked about that. God, oh, I hate myself for not remembering <laughs> that. Mm, I should have just I should have nailed you to the cross on that one, but no, I, I was. Mm. I thought it might have been a softball, but uh, uh, no, man. I mean, I forgot a lot of that 
that radar stuff from um, it was about thirty years ago, so it's hard to remember. Well, I believe WLS Radio in Chicago still broadcasts in Sequam. I don't know if you yeah, can get a receiver. On, uh, eight, 890, right? 890 AM, yeah. yeah, yeah the yeah. Big 89. The Big 89, everybody. That's it. So News at 5 past the hour. There you go. The mm. funny thing is that the Sequam concept, it has a problem with uh, uh, separation. And, and the, channel, the, the stereo separation will will pitch to the right channel for a little while, then it'll go back to the left, and oh, it has a hard time staying kind centered. Drift a little bit. Okay. It drifts back and forth. So people really, a lot of them hated it. And uh, yeah. and I remember an when, for you. when I got yeah. that car, that was like one of the first, I was like, oh, wow, it's got the Sequam. I'd never even heard this before. So I was tuning in some AM stations, and I'm like, yeah, that kind of sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, nice, nice. So I promptly went to my local, oh, I guess it was Circuit City, maybe, uh-huh. and uh, picked up a, uh, a five-disc CD changer mounted in the trunk, a JVC unit. Boom. With an FM modulator that plugged into the antenna, and it had a wired remote <laughs> that came God up. God bless the, America, the man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, I, was, that was like high fidelity back then. It was the GM Concert Sound uh, with, Ooh, with the factory nice. Bose speakers. And if you remember the print ads, they, they showed the car in like a wireframe with the speaker locations with these rays uh, radiating yeah, from yeah, each yeah, one. Yeah, sure. you know, and and a, a wireframe dummy sitting behind the wheel just bathed in stereo sound provided by Delco Bose concert sound <laughs> uh and of course like everybody with a six disc changer you put six discs in it and then you never change them again never change them again and, and you know ev- the order of every song and every cd you, your depeche mode your last song from depeche mode angie and like okay i got thompson twins coming up next here we go <laughs> yeah, that's it totally <laughs> because who's gonna be driving on the highway and pulling over that's right. to get to this train can't in live the, like that in the man. trunk because it had to be mounted in the trunk because somebody would steal it you know yeah, exactly totally the kids totally. today with your mp3s and your bluetooth oh, i'm telling you with your apple music and all that good gravy the only thing that's good for is listening to this show it's 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 <laughs> excellent for listening to the show. Please subscribe right now to V8 Radio. It's uh, it's zesty, if you will. <laughs> it's a zesty show. <laughs> All right. Well, this was fun. Uh, we I think we covered some actual uh, uh, actual topics. Uh, well, so we did. Yeah, and and I yeah. dig that idea. Uh, you're, you're 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 motivating me to go take the kids for a ride safely in the neighborhood. So that's cool. Good. Yeah, they need it. They need it bad. This episode was good for the industry, for crying out loud. Yes. <laughs> for our future. <laughs> we, as a couple of industry guys, we really need this. <laughs> Outstanding. Always good to talk to a colleague. <laughs> yeah, you know, r- rubbing elbows. Yeah, that's right, Matt. Uh, so, hey, we appreciate everybody tuning in. Uh, you can tune in on TuneIn. Uh, you can tune in on uh, Google Play, of course, on iTunes. iTunes has been kind of interesting. We hit number 15 the other day. Yep, we sure did. Uh, we sure did. The uh, Stitcher Radio uh, uh, Podchaser, I think we're still doing pretty good over there, right? Yeah, we're we're rocking it at Podchaser. Number number yeah. two? We, so. own, we own the place, yeah. We own the place, <laughs> awesome, pretty much. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, and, of course, the Facebook page, nv8radio.com. Uh, I guess if you're hearing this, you know where to find us, right? So uh, just keep doing that. Please, and thank you. Yeah. And we'll be back next time with more automotive nonsense on V8 Radio. For Mr. Q-Ball Clark, I'm Kevin Oste, and uh, keep it it over 100 this time. uh, That's right. (laughs) We'll see you next time on V8 Radio.